use and or view at your own risk. In this video we're going to look at ESET System Rescue Live CD which is a bootable anti-malware solution that is uh, free of charge from, from ESET. I'm going to show you, well we already know what it is, I'm going to show you where to get it and a few settings to optimize the use of it. So let's go ahead and get it first. Very first thing you'll need to do is open up your browser and in the search bo uh, box simply type ESET, -E ESET, hit enter. We'll go to their main website which is ESET.com forward slash US if you're in the US. And then you want to go up to the upper right to the menu, the hamburger menu and click that and go to download. And then you want to look under the heading of others for tools and utilities. Click that. And they have several tools and utilities for free here. I've always liked ESET. It's a very good company. Very professional. And go to ESET System, Sys Rescue Live or System Rescue Live. Click the download button. and then download for free that'll take you to another menu where you can either download the ISO image itself or if you'll drop this menu down you'll see that they have their own little live CD USB creator I've not had very much luck with that just download the ISO image and actually burn a CD I've tried using their USB creator and I've tried burning the ISO to a an external hard drive using Rufus. I haven't had any, any luck with either one of those. So just burn it to a CD. So you can just go ahead and hit download. It's not but 479 megabytes. So it doesn't take that very long. And you can see at the making of this video the version is 1.0.14.0. I've already pre-downloaded it, so we'll go ahead and close this out. And if you're not familiar with how to burn an ISO image, just go to the folder where you downloaded it. More than likely it's going to be in your downloads folder. And if anything Windows 7 and above, you can simply find the ISO image, which will be a .ISO. You may not have um, extensions viewable. If you don't, if it just says ESET Sys Rescue underscore live underscore English, and that's all you see go to organize then folder and search options then view and make sure that hide extension for known file types is unchecked and you'll see here right quick you'll see what it, the difference so uncheck it and you can see now you can differentiate between an ISO and an EXE you simply right click it and select burn image of course make sure you have a blank CD or DVD in the heart in the uh, CD or DVD uh, ROM drive and that'll take you through that I'm not gonna do that here just for the sake of time and why well, make you go through it twice just burn that make sure verified disk is um, selected and then once you get that done go ahead and close all this out and what you'll want to do is you want to leave your uh, CD or DVD, DVD in the drive, restart the machine, and either make sure the machine is set to boot up through the DVD drive, CD drive, or use the uh, boot menu to force it to boot up through the CD or DVD drive. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that now, and we'll show you some configuration tips and tricks that that will give you a little better performance out of this uh, this free tool.
Now while we're waiting for the ESET system rescue live CD or operating system to boot up, make sure that you're connected to the internet so that it can go out and update the virus database with the latest definitions. Just give it a few minutes, it doesn't take long to boot up. Now you can see that once it has booted up, you are presented with a license agreement. You'll also notice on the desktop there are two instructions. One, once the program starts, click update and download the latest virus database. And two, click on demand scan and select either smart scan or custom scan. If you had connected to the internet already, it should automatically update, but we'll check and make sure and I'll show you how to do that. Let's deal with the license agreement first. Very first thing, of course, is the end user license agreement. I'm going to make sure to read through that if you do that kind of thing. And then you are presented with two options the live grid. And the live grid is basically so the program can detect zero day vulnerabilities or have the absolute latest definitions or detections available. So it's a very good thing to enable that and potentially unwanted applications. Also a good thing to enable that. So we'll enable both of those and then we'll accept the terms in the license agreement. Now you'll notice that the database is what 630 2017 so that's not up to date but you'll also notice if you look down in the taskbar that it is updating. So the update is in progress. Just give it a few minutes and it'll update. If it doesn't update, you can always go to the update selection and update it manually. You shouldn't have to do that. Just give it a little bit. Should take like five minutes, ten minutes max. Okay, as you can see by the notification on the desktop, it has indeed updated the virus signature database, and you can also see down in the program itself that the version of the virus signature database is now changed and the date on it is 10-30-2017 which is today. The very next thing we want to do is go to on-demand scan. Smart scan is basically a tampered down scan for whatever reason that you're just I guess doing a, a, a preemptive scan or, or for some reason I really don't know why anybody would want to do a smart scan and actually go through the trouble of booting into an uh, any malware solution. It seems counterintuitive to me. So let's just stick with the custom scan. So we'll click that. And here is where we're going to actually manipulate the settings to get a, a little better operation out of the uh, the scan itself. Of course, you want to select everything, even the CD-ROM. That, that, that also may seem counterintuitive, but viruses can hide in a whole bunch of places. So that's uh, flashable memory, you know, just anywhere you can think of. There are people out there who are smart enough to write programs to allow their viruses to hide in places that most wouldn't think of. That's kind of the whole purpose of a virus is to be somewhere you wouldn't think it'd be. We're going to change the scan profile from smart scan to in-depth. I have to reselect that, sorry. And then you want to go down to setup. If for some reason you had some kind of mission critical files on the computer or something that you just couldn't lose or didn't have backed up and you were just wanting to see first if you were infected I would uh, check scan without cleaning and that will let you know if you're infected. We're not going to do that. We'll click setup. I would make sure that mailboxes is ticked and you'll see that it gives you a warning that enabling this option may cause conflicts with certain email clients. If we're going to scan, we need to scan. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. And next is options. Go to the options heading. Scan options, heuristics, advanced heuristics, potentially unwanted applications, and potentially unsafe applications. I'd make sure all of those are checked. Cleaning. Again, this goes back to the same thing. 
no cleaning it's just going to tell you if you are or aren't infected and you can read down below you know in this mode the program will attempt to automatically clean or delete infected files if neither action can be performed an alert window with a list of available actions will be displayed an alert window will also be displayed if the action fails or you can go you can set it to strict cleaning and that will clean or delete any uh, malware it finds and the files that it happens to have attached itself to be aware of that next is extensions for some reason if you wanted to exclude certain uh, file extensions this is where you do that limits object scan limits maximum size is set to zero meaning that there is no uh, maximum size limit you can change this to whatever you want but I think it will only go up to 2048 which is the uh, file size limit for FAT32 if I'm not mistaken that's fine you can leave that just as it is the, here is something that's very important the archive scan limits and the maximum nesting level and what that is is archives inside of archives now people who write viruses they they're aware of these programs too so what they do is they look and see how what the standard nesting level is and then they try to bury their virus below that so you want to make sure and run that up as far as you can 20 is as, is as far as it'll let us go in this program that's okay and this is a free solution so it's kind of hard to complain exclude system control folders from scanning I would uncheck that so that we do scan system control folders understand that if you put this to strict cleaning and there's a virus attached to a system file and it cleans it you may render your operating system unbootable just something to be aware of and then others enable smart optimization to my understanding tries to make your scan quicker by scanning files that ESET deems I guess non-infectable I would leave that unchecked scan alternative data streams leave that checked preserved last access timestamp really doesn't matter might as well leave it checked go ahead and hit OK look everything over make sure that we're running in depth make sure that we're scanning everything we've already done our setup you can always go back in and make sure that the settings you know stayed the way you put them just just to double check okay and then scan now it's going to take a good while it can probably take anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours so just sit back and relax go do whatever you got to do and uh I'll, I won't make you wait that long on the video. I'll edit it out and we'll come back once it gets done. Once the scan is completed, you'll be presented with several options from what you see here to just a description of what went on or a description of how many uh, infected objects were found, cleaned, or deleted. You may be presented with a menu asking you what you would like to do, whether you would like to clean the file or delete the file if cleaning wasn't possible. These are all per your scan settings. If you would like a detailed view of what files were infected or cleaned or deleted, you can always go to show scan log and that will give you a more detailed view of what went on. If infections were found, the very first thing you need to do is stop, get a piece of paper, and start writing down all the files that you know you want to keep. Now ESET has provided a good number of tools within this live environment to be able to do as much as possibly to get you back on track. Understand, as I said before, and per your scan settings, if a system file was infected, it may keep your system from booting not to worry your system might not boot back up but you can if you have to if you for whatever reason boot out this live CD you can always boot back into it 
and use the file manager that's provided you to surf to your files that you want to keep. You can plug in an external hard drive or a USB thumb drive and move those files off to that thumb drive. I would not suggest doing that. ESET has also included a web browser in this live environment. I would take the time, take a piece of paper, write down all the files I wanted to keep, find those files using the file manager, and then log into some kind of cloud service such as Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive and move those files there. And then anybody worth their salt in the computer industry will tell you the only way to even have a substantial chance of knowing you're clean is to invoke what's known as a scorched earth policy and that means run some data destruction or hard drive wiping utility such as DBAN wipe your hard drive and then reinstall the entire operating system from scratch I certainly hope this helped you out I hope that you didn't come up with any infections but if you did those are the things you can do to go about getting back to square one now you can simply, if no infections were found, just log out, restart the computer, make sure you take out the live CD or the ESET SysRescue or System Rescue live CD and boot back into Windows normally again if no infections were found or if for whatever reason you need to go ahead and go back into Windows if you can and do whatever you need to do before you implement a reinstall. And thank you for watching.